Sayın dört seyircilere merhaba. Dünyanın gündeminde Afganistan var. Taliban'ın kontrol ele geçirmesiyle yaşanan şok yerini ülkedeki kadınlar ve kız çocuklarının geleceğine ilişkin endişelere bıraktı. Taliban'dan gelen açıklamalar e, değiştikleri ve kadın haklarına, çocukların eğitimine e, saygı duyacakları yönündeyken sahadan ülke içinden e, aktarılan bilgiler bunun aksine kadınların çok büyük bir yaşam korkusu içinde olduğunu gösteriyor. E, biz de bugün Afganistan'da doğan, 15 yaşına kadar Afganistan'da kalıp Kanada'ya taşınan kadın hakları aktivisti Ayda Sancuş'u konuk alacağız. Ayda ile Taliban dönemin, e, Taliban sonrası Afganistan'da bir kız çocuğu olarak e, yaşadıklarını, daha sonra bugünü nasıl değerlendirdiğini ve Afganistan'ın kadınları ve çocukları için geleceği nasıl gördüğünü konuşacağız. Hello Ayda, thank you for joining us today. How are you? Hi, Milas. I'm doing well. How are you doing? Thank you for having me today. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, first of all, I'd like to start with a background question, actually. Uh, you were born in Afghanistan and you were raised there, I guess, until you were 15, right? Uh, yes. Uh, yes, I left Afghanistan when I was 15. Uh, so from your experiences, uh, what was it like to uh, uh, live in Afghanistan as a young girl in these last 20 years, actually? You witnessed those times too. How was it like? Um, honestly, uh, it is hard. It is challenging to be a woman in an Afghan society, just uh, in very different capacities. I um, I was born when the Taliban were dismantled uh, in 2001, so I did not really see um, uh, being ruled under 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 the Taliban, the terrorist Taliban. Um, I uh, have seen a lot of uh, consequences from their actions. So on a daily basis, every day we have witnessed um, explosions, um, uh, schools being destroyed, girls being poisoned at schools. Um, so I have had a lot of challenges on my daily day-to-day -day basis uh, being a woman in Afghanistan and uh, all of them as a result of the actions that have been uh, uh, taken by, by the terrorist Taliban and their supporters, um, different, the different nations that are supporting them. Uh, until the day you uh, left Afghanistan, was there an improvement in this in this 20 years? Was there an improvement in this situation? Um, in, in terms of security, no, uh, there was no improvement. Uh, we have gotten like it, it has gotten worse. Like the Kabul province, uh, the Kabul city is the the capital of Afghanistan, and that's the, the, the that you expect that that place to be safe, but it's one of the unsafest places. Um, and uh, because when you go outside, you can you will uh, you, you can't uh, guarantee that you're going to come back home alive, because there can be an explosion happening anywhere at any time, and, and you could be killed. So I, um, uh, in terms of security, no. But I would say in terms of like development and, and culture, one being able to get an education, it has improved a lot. And and women were. Uh, in comparison to 2001, I would say like, not even like just 2011 to 2020 was a huge, huge difference um, in the way people uh, would use their time, their education, women being allowed to work in public sectors, sectors and all that, uh, which is not really uh, an option anymore for, for many women now. I understand. Then coming back to today, uh, how did you feel when uh, Taliban took over the power this week? And actually, could you talk to people you know who still live in Afghanistan? What was their first reaction? Uh, was it expected, actually? Yeah, honestly, the past the past two weeks has been really, really, really hard for all of us just to know that like every day we wake up learning that the, the terrorist Taliban have taken over one province, two provinces, three provinces, so like back to back. And it's been really hard to even witness that. And what was more shocking was waking up on a Sunday morning and hearing uh, our president, uh, which is very, very shameful to say even, uh, uh, flee the country. He ran away. Uh, with millions of dollars and he sold out uh, um, the country. He gifted the country to a terrorist. And that was really heartbreaking and it was very shocking because we all thought that at least Kabul could um, uh, 
we we never thought that they would come and like we wouldn't even have like any fight and they just like take over like we're like gifted and so it was like mm -hmm. very young. i have uh spoken to um my friends my family members that have skipped provinces to come to kabul everyone like moved to kabul because we know it's not safe but at least we knew that um at least like the taliban were not like taking control so everyone moved to to kabul my cousins everybody and uh yeah and my, i actually got in contact with one of my friends who was who's an activist her whole family members everyone's an activist like her mom um they they were planning on leaving the, the country by the end of the week and they were all shook to 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 witness the taliban take over on a sunday morning and and, and they they were very confused so everyone was confused and people were running around and women trying to get out of the country and, and as a result we had so many like um you know people uh, being uh, killed flying out of the airplane and and, and very very mm -hmm. sudden uh, uh turbulences that happened uh, to afghans besides uh, uh, Taliban's violence. Um, yeah, I have been in touch, and people are still still trying to get out of the country, unfortunately, and and, and countries are trying to support uh, Afghanistan, mm -hmm. and uh, it's really uh, it makes me sad to hear that even when countries say like, oh, we're gonna accept refugees from this country, because being an Afghan myself, these countries pick and choose. The countries want the best. The countries want. The journalists, they want the activists, they want human yeah. rights activists, and all of these people that could be potential uh, change makers in the country. And they leave. Like, how do you expect the country to be free again? Um, and and I truly believe that the country will be free again when there is education, when educated people are in power, and when educated people really care. And so, when the Taliban, like what you see, is like a bunch of cowards, a bunch of uh, I can't even call them animals because animals are way better, like way better, because animals take what they need and they go. But these people are very, very, very different. And I can't believe like country we 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 think that we have democracy. Somebody comes in and 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 has all the guns and we don't even know who they are. Like all these foreigners come in and and they lead you and they lead the country. And they throw your flag away and then and uh, they call they remove the name of your country and they name your country something else it just insane and it's been really really hard like disheartening to see that and then i think for myself um, and i'm sure like many other people many afghans relate as well as that what has been more disheartening is the seeing the silence of the world nobody's condemning the the, the terrorist taliban mm -hmm. and actually there are countries that are starting to recognize them as as their state and that's really really sad to see that wow uh but now we're changing into something completely different than we were and i personally was very very disappointed to see that that we that the president fleeing the country because he didn't want any bloodshed to to throw around the country i i would rather die i would rather die, die uh, and and die free than than give my freedom to someone else and get to give someone else to rule me without me being um willing for them to uh, rule me so it's really um disappointing uh, before coming to this week uh, this week's statements from taliban uh, on protecting women's rights and children's rights to get education uh, we hear from many women that uh, they they feel like their their lives are at risk right now so uh, what awaits women uh, under the taliban rule actually um Oh, it's it's been in books. It has been history and how the Taliban ruled women and how they were and how they treated us and how my mom and my 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 sister, my aunts, how they dealt with the Taliban was very very inhumane and it was very very um, um, violent and cruel and wild that you wouldn't even wish your worst enemy to be in that situation. Um, women had no rights. They couldn't go out of their homes. They, if they went out of their homes, they had to uh, be accompanied by a male relative. Um, the windows had to be covered. They painted, they covered the windows, painted the windows so that the men could not see the women inside. And they're trying to use these Islamic laws that are not really relevant. It's very, very, they take it very like in a misconception of the religion and try to apply it on, on, on the people. And uh, yeah, so that the reason that they would use was that they would say, this is, this is Islam, we're following the Islam. And the Islam that I follow, that I know about 
and the Islam that they follow is completely different. So uh, I do not consider them Muslims. I, I, I see them as uh, they have their own ideologies. They're just a terrorist group that they have to be recognized by different countries as terrorist groups. Um, they, they're violent and uh, they bring nothing but adversity and uh, and violence to, to, to people, especially women and children that have been affected um, in 2001. That my, my sister something talks about it and my mom was not allowed to work and uh, just things were very very insane and nobody wants to go back to to that time and we never expected that we would ever go back to that time ever again but now here so we how, are uh, how does it f make you feel to uh watch taliban said that they are changed and they will be protecting women's rights under islamic law but they give a sort of guarantee on this how does it make you feel to hear that can an afghan woman uh, trust this promise I, I can't. I will not trust this group. They have been recognized as a terrorist group. I call them a terrorist group. I cannot trust this group. Um, they have brought so much hardship to the women and children a long time ago, and they can't come and, and say that they have changed. And how can they change? Like, like let, let we can leave that part that, like, yeah, maybe they have changed, but then and how like how can we say they have changed when uh they come into someone's country they flee they they, they throw the flag away they they have their guns they shoot whoever they want and they take over your freedom they want to rule you like how is that like a change they're the same i don't see anything different and so to me when they say when people say they have changed, i i just laugh and i'm like wow okay so um we'll see we'll see but it's 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 yeah it's just really uh to me i i completely disagree with that that point because we have seen them and even that what they're doing right now is um that they're trying to show that they're they're being kind to women and they have changed i uh i cannot believe them i cannot trust them and i know all the women that have flee flee the country in the past two days uh, they cannot trust him him them and we will not we cannot go back to the ba the past and we want to we want to be free and we want to have our own government and see and be able to choose who our leader is not not have a, a, a rule that has pressured on us to to be ruled so yeah uh, from here i'm gonna move to education actually because i know you're an advocate for education too uh, and ed girls' education actually has always been a critical issue in Afghanistan. Uh, UNICEF's field operation chief uh, just uh, said that uh, after Taliban's recent statements uh, and some discussions with local members of Taliban, they feel optimistic about uh, girls' education. Um, can we can we be optimistic on at this point? Can you comment on this uh, issue too? Um, uh, the pro Herat province, one of the very uh, biggest cities in, in, in Afghanistan that was taken over by the Taliban, uh, women uh, are not allowed to go to universities. They have stopped. So I don't know based on what uh, uh, evidence they're saying that, but uh, the province, the Taliban stopped women from going to school. There have been reports now from, from this past week that 60% uh, of the, the, the universities include women. So 60%, more than 50% is women that attend these universities and uh, they have been banned. Women cannot go out of their homes. So uh, we have we have examples of uh, seeing like how women are. And, and even if they say you can go, women are so afraid to even get out of their homes. And we have some very, very brave women that have gone now. They have gone to protest against the Taliban. They have gone to protest on social equality and and, and I, I'm seeing like these photos and it makes me so happy but at the same time uh, we have examples where uh, women were not able to um, go to school they cannot and my province schools are closed Kabul schools are closed I've checked onto my friends and, and I have asked them they say schools are closed and uh, nobody's going to school so the fear is still there and 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 I can't I'm not optimistic about this and if they're ruling I can't be maybe if maybe the schools like primary schools school girls could go to school but I can't I'm not optimistic about universities being um, being reopened for women again if they're ruling um, I understand, but uh, after UNICEF, actually, I'm coming to the question of the international response to this crisis. How do you ev evaluate this, uh, especially regarding 
the people who are uh, most at risk? How do you think the international community responded until now? Um, I'm disappointed. That's the word I would like to use uh, for this. I'm very, very disappointed at the way the international community is uh, treating this issue. And there have there have been some countries that have called out the Taliban and terrorists as terrorists. There have been countries who have recognized the Islamic State of Afghanistan. They have recognized them, which is so heartbreaking. And also, I guess, not very surprising because some of these countries have a hand into supplying them and supporting these, these terrorist groups. So. Uh, they they don't have any issues with calling with, with recognizing them, but the international community has not done a great job. I I am very disappointed at how it's happening, and how the the U.S. military um, trying to save women and then um, uh, and then leaving many behind. And 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 I just saw some very disturbing videos today and how um, when people were like uh, gathering together around the, the airport because everyone is trying to leave. Everyone is like around the airport trying to leave. They have. Uh, they were like using gunshots and fires uh, to like stop people from like gathering out of the airports. So um, I'm disappointed. I think that a lot more can be done about this issue. And uh, the one thing that they should be doing is to not recognize these countries as 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 a as a, as a state, as a government, because they are not. They're just there. They're stealing someone's country and they're naming it by what their own names. So um, I yeah, I'm disappointed. Uh, from a women's rights activist perspective, what do you think can and should be done at this moment for people, for women, for children, for uh, religious minor minorities? Uh, what are the options that should be taken into account? Um, this is a very tough question, honestly. Uh, um, from like an Afghan perspective, like I know if I was in that situation, I would just want to get out. Right now, I would just want to get out. But then also seeing from a perspective of like being someone that I want to serve Afghanistan in the future, I want to be there for my people. It really bothers me to see that all these people are leaving the country. The people that are the chain makers of tomorrow are leaving the country. So uh, even me wanting them to leave the country, it could be good for them, but then it's also bad for the country because who is going to stand against these terrorist groups if, if they leave? So humanitarian uh, aid is uh, a must. Like we need a lot of it. There have been so many refugees, people have been displaced, a lot of children and 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 um, and women and men have been injured about these, uh, uh, the gunshots that have been around, the explosions, that the uh, bombarding that have happened in different provinces, and these people have moved to Kabul and to, to seek refuge, and now they're in a worse, much worse situation. So um, humanitarian aid is very, very important right now, a lot of the media, so uh, uh, donating to fundraisers and, 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 and helping the people. Uh, like uh, on a daily basis right now and secondly um, the U.S. put us in the situation that we are in right now so they have to take responsibility and they have to uh, uh, help the people in whatever capacity they can that could be through giving them they have to I would say uh, I'm very disappointed right now with, with what's happening because uh, they don't even take responsibility and they think that they came they completed their mission and they lived as if we were uh, some uh, kind of like we don't i don't we're not recognized as humans that's how i feel that uh you come you complete your mission you go could i do that today like could i just come and complete my mission and leave would you let me go like that so um it's just disappointing i can't even like just i could write essays and essays and essays and make videos about the us and, and their involvement and their um the disturbance that they have uh the the violence that they have brought into the country and so they have to take responsibility and to do uh, 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 what they can for, for the country that could be accepting refugees. Um, Canada is accepting 2,000 refugees and, and, and I would say uh, 20,000, sorry. Um, uh, the U.S. has to take a much larger uh, capacity on that um, and, 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 and um, uh, push the people, the government, and also not recognize and the countries have to, um, the international organization, or they don't have to, they should not recognize and fund uh, the terrorist Taliban, especially when they become their own government. I hope that never happens, but based on what we see right now, it could be possible. Um, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, uh, but also, at the same time as I mentioned, I'm also disappointed to say that the, I am sad that these people are leaving the country. And I wish I could be in my country right now, but I know that it's for probably a very horrible idea to even be around that area. Um, so, uh, yeah.
the people being allowed to leave the country is one thing and then and uh, pushing the Taliban and them to uh, let the people leave the country because right now the airports are closed as well mm -hmm. so they can't even leave the country so that's that's an um, that makes should they should make that an option do you think there's a glimpse of hope there's still a glimpse of hope for afghan people do you believe that that is a very hard question um we do have, um, I don't know. I can't really say yes or no because it's a very complicated question. I would say that um, we do have some politicians that are there right now, some people that did not give up. We have the VP of Afghanistan and a few other uh, big politicians that said that they would never bow to the Taliban, never give up. And unlike our president, so our former president, and 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 um, I, uh, I do have some hope that uh, even if there's some bloodshed, I'm 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 all for it. So long we get our freedom back, so long we have a flag up straight and and steadfast like before on the on the um, the the presidential palace wherever it is. I want the uh, black, red, and green flag out there and. Uh, Right now, I would say there is some hope because we do have some people that are still fighting. And it makes me so happy that people have changed so much from 2001. Because people have seen their, the, the hardship that they have faced since their takeover in two, before 2001. So that's why, um, like literally a lot of people are against, against the Taliban and they really, really dislike and despise uh, what they have done and what they do. So it gives me some hope to see that People are standing up, are very, very strong, very brave. They're standing up, they're protesting, despite their being Taliban, they stand up. There's a full video I saw today that women, four women are protesting in front of the Taliban. They're like, just looking, they're like, what do we do with these people? And I'm like, that's strength, that is bravery. Um, so that seeing them gives me some hope and also having some politicians, which I do not have um, a lot of hope in, but I might be at least like just um, a tiny bit um, uh, positive that at least uh, we have, we're not giving up that easily, that uh, we still have like two provinces, I believe, uh, that have not been controlled. And so uh, we're going to fight back and we're going to try our best to see what happens. And even if it doesn't happen, we do, I guarantee, and we all know that the Taliban are not going to rule that long, that they're not going to rule that long. It's going to be very, very short term, even if they do. Maybe it's not, maybe it's going to rule for one year or two. It's not going to go that far. So we're going to still go back to normal and things are going to get better. And I know that. But for now, it's hard to be optimistic, um, very optimistic. So I am, I do try to not lose hope, but um, yeah, we're getting there. <laughs> Thank you so much, Aida, for your uh, for joining our uh, interview. Thank you so much, Melissa. This was great, um, and um, yeah, have a great day.